Good morning, everyone. Today is New Year's Eve, and those of you who have been following me for a while now know that usually on a New Year's Eve, I would go back home, back to where it all began for me at Weybridge Rowing Club with my buddy Matt, and we would usually always just figure out some sort of workout, and we'd crush it for about an hour, and then we'd go to Nando's, have a big feast, wish each other Happy New Year, and then spend the rest of the day of our family. Um, obviously, that's not happening this year. Um, you know, the, the world is pretty much still in lockdown. Um, in the UK, we're in Tier 4, um, which basically means that uh, it's not as aggressive as the original lockdown um, when everything sort of first kicked off. Um, you can still go outside if you're going to do some activity, if you're going to go essential shopping, if you're going to and from work. But from that, you want to try and stay indoors as much as you can uh, to limit your exposure to all the naughties out there. Um, but it's not the end of the world. You know, we're all doing it to stay healthy and to stay safe. Um, I've been living by myself now for quite a while and I am back training. I've got the, uh, the steed right here um and i thought you know i'm going to stay true to my usual new year's eve workout i'm not going to do something boring like an 18 or a 20k steady state ergo i want to mix it up a little bit so i'm thinking today i'm going to do um an old school favorite of mine um those of you who are on the row league programs would have done this at some point um and it will be cropping up a lot more in sort of the next couple of weeks as we sort of build those engines and get everyone ready to kick off 2021 in the best shape they can be. Um, but it's effectively three blocks of 10 minutes with five minutes rest. Every 10 minutes is split up into two minute segments. Um, every two minutes, the rate will go up to and you wanna try and push the speed on to. So effectively, if you're starting at rate 20 at two minute splits, you're then gonna do 22, 24, 26, blah, blah, blah. And that two minute score is going to go two minutes, 58, 56, 54, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's going to be my workout this morning. Um, I'm allowed to share it with you because it's not a British Rowan workout. It's not on the program. I'm going rogue. But I think once you're training in isolation, it's good to sort of add some variety in there. And you, know, you don't want to get bored of what you're doing. You want to continue to love what it is you're doing. So I'm currently sitting here <clears throat> eating the typical porridge, protein porridge with an apple, um, doing some revision for my personal trainer course, um, and then I'm going to crack on with the 3 by 10 That's the uh, first 10 minutes in the bag. Um, hit all the straight rates, didn't really know where to pitch in at. Started at rate 20, uh, so my usual steady state. So the first sort of two minutes was really easy. Second two minutes, you're okay. But then that last sort of six minutes, you're really starting to push in. That last two minutes, you're really starting to, try to put the knife in. That's the Hoover going around making a racket. I hope it doesn't come through too much. I hope you can hear me over it. So one down, three to go. Okay, so that's piece number two done. Uh, nailed all the rates, 20, 22 is important, it's 28. Managed to push that one on, so it was 0.3 faster. And the first 10 minutes, so I've got about four more minutes of rest now, and then we take on the last piece, um, where I'm probably going to hold the same pacing for the first eight minutes, and then the last two minutes, nudge it on and uh, keep that negative split approach going. Okay, that's piece number three in the bag. Good, so sort of over the three pieces. Um, Push it on a couple of points per second. Yeah, so from first to last, uh, there's about one, one split difference in the average. So 
pushed it on nicely over the three pieces. Uh, if you want to set this work up, work out for yourself, um, just set it up for 10 minutes at a time and have the machine record your splits and rates every two minutes. Um, and once you finish the piece, just take the rest period off a clock or a watch anywhere. I'm using the clock on my oven just so you know roughly where five minutes is. You don't have to be too regimented with it. Try not to have any more than five minutes rest. You want to try and get the heart rate ticking over. Um, Polar let me down on that piece. I was pausing my heart rate at the end of every piece and then restarting it at the beginning of every piece. And uh, it's saying that my average heart rate for the whole session was 69. But that last piece, when I finished, I looked at it and my heart rate was at 188. Um, so, you know, even though it starts nice and easy, it's totally in your control if you want to push it on towards the end. And sort of the last four minutes or so, you're probably looking to be in and around, uh, I guess, your 5K pace. Um, so what you'd normally do, I guess, the first 3K of your 5K, you're in that sort of ballpark. Um, so four minutes out, it's a little bit uncomfortable, but you can sustain it as you would in a 5K. And then the last 2K, the last two minutes, you can really start to push it on. Um, for me, that last two minutes at rate 28, I probably finished on what I'd normally average for an entire 5K. Um, so, you know, you're starting at a nice steady UT2 and you're finishing on your 5K pace. So it ramps up. Do that three times the short rest period. You know, it's a nice short session. I say short, it's 40 minutes long, but it feels short because you're only looking at it in 10 minute blocks. So if you haven't a go at it, have a go at it. Uh, put down in the comments below if you have had a go at this workout and how you found it. Uh, I personally really enjoy it. Um, got a really good sweat on and it's, for me, it's a, it's a great way to uh, kick off New Year's Eve. So I'm gonna jump in the shower, make my second breakfast. Uh, and then I've got some work to do um, and then I think I'm going to go for a walk after I've finished that. There you have it. That is breakfast number two. Um, <laughs> egg white omelette with two slices of toast with Philadelphia on top. Um, I probably get asked a lot of questions. Why it's an egg white omelette? Uh, I actually quite like them. I probably prefer them to a normal egg omelette to be honest um i've never really been the biggest fan of the yolks in eggs um but i mean i like my eggs scrambled and poached and whatever i do like eggs just never been a big fan of the yolks but um i actually prefer the taste and the texture of uh, an egg white omelette um obviously it's quite a lot lower in calories but the sort of the protein is still high that's the main thing i'm looking at these days um and it means i can treat myself a little bit more as the day goes on. I've got a few extra calories in the back pocket. I've just burned quite a few on the uh, the three by 10 minutes. Um, but it's very quick, very simple to make. Uh, drink that with a coffee. And um, yeah, I'll crack on with some work. We've got the new year, new me, six week. Plan goes live tomorrow morning. So making all the final adjustments to that before I send out the invites to all the awesome people who uh, book their spots on it. So eat my breakfast, do my work. I think I've got a Zoom call after that. Um, hopefully it's gonna get a bit warmer. I think it's currently one degree outside. Um, so I'll throw on all my Christmas presents, keep myself nice and warm uh, and head off for a little walk. Everything took a little while longer uh, than I planned, probably about four hours longer, but we've managed to get out. It is now 20 past four and the sun is just setting. Uh, it's actually quite pleasant out. It's freezing cold, but this is usually a, a farmer's field that he plows very nicely every year. Um, it is now flooded and looks like it's a nice rink. Uh, I doubt the ice is that thick though. Um, I would say it's refreshing. I feel like my fingertips are going to fall off. It's that cold. Maybe I just need to man up a little bit. I got the Christmas clubber on. I'm trying to keep myself as warm as possible. So as I sort of come to an end of this walk, my hands are getting very cold. 
Uh, I thought I'd take the opportunity to answer maybe like two or three questions that I get asked a lot on uh, social media. And um, I think the first one is, well, it was, how do I stay motivated during lockdown? And I think, especially during the first lockdown, it was tough. No one really knew what was going to go. Uh, no one really knew what was going on or how long it would last. Um, and as an athlete, you know, training for the Olympics, we had no idea if the Olympics was going to be going ahead, whether it was going to be postponed. Um, but until we found out, find out that, um, you know, we had to keep training. And I think for me, I'm someone that, that does really well working towards goals. And I like to set long-term goals. Uh, you know, it could be a year, it could be four years, but along the way, I always set myself benchmarks. Um, and I think benchmarks are a really handy way of marking um, my progression, see if I'm on the right track. If I'm not quite where I want to be by that benchmark, then I can look back at my training, figure out uh, what I could be doing better and what is working, if anything, um, and make those small alterations just in time for another benchmark where I can get another gauge on um, sort of the condition I'm in. So, you know, the biggest way for me to stay motivated is to set the goals and have a benchmark, but then also having a coach whether that's in person or virtual uh having a coach you know not necessarily having to set the programs but they make you feel accountable if you don't complete a session you've then got to explain to them why you didn't complete that session and it's a lot harder to lie to someone else than it is to lie to yourself um so i always found that really useful during my lockdown i had steve trapmore uh who was talking to me almost on a daily basis um, and I'm someone that doesn't like skipping sessions anyway. I feel like I'm cheating myself and the rest of the team if I do end up just skipping sessions or I don't ever give my 100%. Um, but if you're someone who does struggle to keep that motivation, you've got all the best intentions in the world, but you know, some days you're just tired from work and you know, I get it. It's emotional, it's physical stress um, and you have to look after yourself. But if you feel you can do better and you feel you can do more, then having someone who can hold you accountable and make sure you do the structured training uh, is a really good way of forcing you to stay motivated. And on days when you're not feeling so motivated, it's still a way of making sure that you, you do the training so you're not letting someone down. Um, so that's how I stay motivated. And I hope, you know, it's simple, but I think it's super effective. The next one is um, how much do I eat? <laughs> This is quite an easy one. Uh, I've made a few videos during the original lockdown, um, sort of comparing or showing you what I eat every day, uh, tracking all the macros and the nutrients. Uh, and then I also did another video of what I was eating when I was new into the British team. Uh, in I think it was 2014 when I won my first senior world championships. And the two diets are very, very similar. One was very high carbohydrate, and also because of that, it was high calorie. Now it's very much um, high protein, uh, and the calorie aspect has come down a little bit, probably because I'm getting old. Um, but I'm just trying to maintain a lower body weight. I don't want to balloon in the winter and then have to try and lose it all in the summer. I just want to try and stay consistent throughout. Um, I think it's good for power to weight, uh, and it makes the summer a bit easier because you've got more energy in the summer because you're not cutting so many calories um so i think currently now it's anywhere from three and a half to four thousand calories <clears throat> back in 2014 it was about five thousand calories i think but um i'll put a link to those videos below in the description so you can actually go back and watch those for yourself and see everything that i'm eating okay and the third question hang on i'm just gonna have a look at my phone um, so the other one that I actually get asked quite a lot is just about me in general and sort of my rowing career, I guess. Um, some people are, are fascinated when they find out that I, I started as a junior. Um, I think quite a few people, especially when I was younger, I would watch, you know, the Pete Reeds and the Andy Hodges on, on television and you don't really think about their backstory, you just see them as these like the role models of the British rowing team and the lead boats winning all the medals. You don't actually think about them as juniors or under 23s or even students. Um, but for me, I, well, this is my now my ninth year in the senior team. Um, 
before that I did four years as an under 23 um, where I started at Oxford Brooks University and then before that I did two years of junior world championships uh, where I was at Weybridge Rowing Club and then Walton Rowing Club so for me I've been through the whole British rowing system uh, you know uh, 15 years worth I guess now um, two juniors four under 23s and now nine seniors um, uh, so yeah that's a quick round up won a few medals along the way uh, two senior world championships and under 23 world championships university world championships quite a few Henley regattas um, so I've been very lucky with my career so far um, and now just knuckling down as everyone else is every other athlete around the world who's got the intention of going to the Olympics representing their country um, in 2016 I was a spare at the Rio Olympics um, you know since arriving home from that Olympic Games I've made it my personal mission to hopefully get to Tokyo not as a spare this time actually race and um, you know try and replicate what all my friends managed to achieve out in Rio which was an incredible feat bringing home so many gold medals so you know the British team as a whole at the moment is very very strong um, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes um, but in the long run I think it is for the best and I think the, the team will grow stronger from those changes you know it's being well led it's got a good structure in place um, all the athletes are super strong and very very determined so you know the next couple of months is going to be tough internally um, but you know over the next couple of months you should start see should start to see the, the Olympic team start forming up and um, you know I think we're all very excited to see what happens in the summer I guess so hopefully the Olympics will go ahead fingers crossed and um, yeah I guess I'll wrap it up there because my hands are getting cold holding my phone and I'm starting to lose the light so I hope those three questions were answered to their fullest if you do have any more questions as always drop them in the comments below uh, and I'll probably bring them up in a, in a future video so I've just got back from the long walk I've got a bit of hat hair here um, slowly starting to warm up and I think I'm gonna end the video here um, I just wanted to finish off by saying cheers uh, happy new year uh, I know 2020 is you know it's been a struggle it's had its ups and it's has its downs um, and it's very easy to focus on all the negatives that has happened to everyone this year but there are so many positives to take away from it as well so reflect on the positives as much as you reflect on the negatives you know learn adapt and overcome um and i just wanted to say like thank you to everyone who watches these videos thank you to everyone that reaches out over social media asks questions sends messages of support uh it's it is appreciated not just to myself but i know the rest of the team really appreciate the support when you go out and reach out to them as well um and it's great having you guys backing us so happy new year i hope you enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up um, if you haven't subscribed make sure you do you know the videos come few and far between but I hope when they do come up you get some enjoyment out of watching them um, and you know I don't like thinking that 2020 is coming to an end and that something else is going to happen tomorrow I always want to think about you know tomorrow is the start of a new year rather than celebrating the end of something um, so I'm looking forward to what 2021 will bring so again happy new year Cheers, have a good evening. Come.